Hello, everybody. I created this right before we left on our hellacious trip, which I'll have to tell you about. And I had posted it in Stamp Junkies, and a few people wanted to know how I created this. So I'm going to try to record it. I tried this just a few minutes ago, and I text everybody that normally interrupts me that I would be recording and wouldn't you know some people don't look at their text messages so we're gonna try this again so the other thing I'm gonna do is this is created on hammer mill premium color copy cover and I wanted to also try the Distress Specialty Stamping Paper to see if there's a difference in the amount of resist or the brightness of the colors. So um, today I am using Fossilized Amber, Wild Honey, Carved Pumpkin, Crackling Campfire, and Aged Mahogany Distress Oxides. And I'll be using the Rabbit Hole Designs blender brushes. And hopefully I can stay in frame because I don't do this on a regular basis. So we'll just see how it goes. The other thing that I'm going to use is Distress Glaze. And I'm using a blending tool to apply it. This I use specifically for this. It's stained as you can tell. And I had cut out leaves from Spellbinders. And if I can spot the set, if I haven't put it away, I will... Let me see. Maybe I have it over here. Well... Looks like I have everything else under the sun except for the leaf set. Well, maybe I'll run across it as we go through this. So I had cut them out when making another card. And this happened to be on my desk. You know, you don't ever throw anything away. So I was like, well, let me see about applying the micro glaze through this piece of trash and it worked pretty well you can also cut it out of cardstock which is what I did here and used it as a stencil here we go with the notifications I don't care how you mute stuff it still seems to want to do it. Okay. This was the card that I had created using this. So you can do it either way. You can either use vellum or you can use cardstock. Whichever you prefer or whatever you happen to have on hand. Or if you're like me, you just happen to have trash on your table. And you use it for something. <laughs> so, the first thing we're going to do is, this is the hammer mill, and this is the specialty stamping paper. And we're just going to lay down some colors no particular order or well actually there is an order that I use I like to start with the lightest color and then work my way up so in case you're wondering what this is I haven't taken my armband off we went 
to drag race at back of the track, no prep. And we're going along, everything's fine. And we notice that for some reason, people just don't want to stay next to us. Um, <laughs> they keep trying to get away from the motorhome. So we had stopped at a pilot about 14 miles from our destination. And Jamie was going to fuel up so we wouldn't have to when we left on the way home. And we could just make a straight journey back. And uh, it started trying to cut off. So he cut it off and he looks underneath. And there's probably about four gallons of oil on the ground and it's steadily pouring out. So we weren't sure what the problem was at first. And he's looking around in the engine compartment. And first we thought maybe it was a um, sensor, the oil pressure sensor. Well, actually, first he gave me a heart attack. I was inside getting a cup of coffee, and he comes in and says the motor blew up. Needless to say, I wasn't <laughs> wanting my coffee then. So, um, we mess with the sensor. I crank it. He tells me to shut it off. That's not the problem. So, through spraying a whole lot of carburetor cleaner and different things, we realized there is a problem with the Huey pump. And that's what makes the injectors work on the diesel motor that we have. So, we had just put that one on about six months ago. And we still had the original. Um, we had been having some problems and we were replacing different things, trying to figure out what was causing the problem. We were having a lack of boost. So anyway, um, the original pump is at the house because for some reason he took it out of the motorhome, which you never do because if you have it with you, you will never need it. I mean, he should know how the rules are. I mean, when you're going to play the game, you got to follow the rules. You keep all the parts with you. You never need them. And unfortunately, it was back in Virginia, five hours from us. But the good news was is some friends were coming up the next day and could bring it uh, with them. But it was a matter of his dad trying to find it. So... All right, I've laid down the colors, and I'm going to hit this one with the heat tool a little bit because, you know, it's a glossy paper, so it stays um, wet longer. But look how pretty the colors look on this one. And these, these are pretty, but they're just more muted. So I'm going to pause this, and I will... Um, resume after I quit making all the noise with the heat tool. So one thing I noticed is when it dries, it really doesn't look that much different. When it was wet, it was really bright. So now I am going to take this little piece of garbage and lay it on here and I just laid it on at different angles. I wasn't real particular. So the Huey pump thing, we did finally manage to um, get a hold of his dad and even though Jamie didn't know where the heck he put the thing, he was able to find it because he called us back and we were so tickled that he could find it and uh, we 
got it the next morning. We raced, made it to the um, quarterfinals, and then proceeded to put the part on. And then we decided to drive back last night because the friends that brought the pump with them were heading back and were going to follow us just to make sure that we didn't have any problems and it was a cold ride i think i tore it a little bit right there but i don't think it's going to hurt anything so i froze my butt off all the way home well everybody in the motorhome did because there's a vent in the front. Evidently, the actuator door wasn't opening to let the heat in, so it was pouring cold air in. So, glad to be home. Um, it was an interesting trip, one of those that you'll usually always remember. So, <laughs> the bumps in the road always making things interesting. So then, I took this and you can kind of see where the microglaze hit. So I just laid it over here so that it doesn't overlap what I already have. And you can do this with a stencil. Um, matter of fact, I may do this one with the Lawn Fawn stencil that I have. Just happened to see this like I said sitting on the desk and I was like hmm wonder how this will work microglaze is pretty cool I think that's about got it covered so with this one We'll just use, this is a um, two-pack set of stencils, and it's called Fall Leaves Background from Lawn Fawn. So, I think that would be pretty cool on here. I haven't played with these enough to know if they're layering stencils. Um, it's got this little place right here and so does the other stencil that comes with the set. So I'm assuming that somehow you can layer them because I think there's snowflake one. You can overlap them. if you could use a brush with microglaze. I'm pressing right hard to get into these little teeny tiny dots. I think the acorns on here are so cute. I don't know what it is about miniature acorns, but there's adorable little images. Let's see, we can take and put that right there. And let's put that there. So, hmm. I always think that it's eaten up the edge of it but it see how it puffs back out and it's actually not it looks like it tore chunks out of it but it didn't because the first time I saw that I was like oh no my little applicator is done let me get a rag and wipe up some of this mess I think we're 
done with the traveling for drag racing for this season. And it's getting a little cold. I don't like when he races in the cold because too many things can happen. The traction's not the same. So let's dry the microglaze and set it and then we'll do the last step that I did to create this and I'll be right back. So when you dry this it almost looks like the because I think microglaze is like a wax it almost looks like the wax kind of melts and then it loses its sheen and that's how I usually judge when it's done and ready. So I'm taking aged mahogany. I need to get some more of these. Um, a little tiny bug. I don't know what that was. Um, I need to get some more of these holders so that they don't slide around. Mary Ann uses her um, Ken Oliver. Um, I guess it's like a media mat. It's the one that's really kind of sticky and she says that her uh, ink pads don't move around when you set them on that Can you see where the leaves are showing through? like the subtleness of it. Makes such pretty fall backgrounds. I need to try it with the snowflakes. All right, what did I do with my little cloth? Here we go. And then I just take and buff it. See how they show up? like magic. And the funny thing is, okay, this is, okay, I've got them switched around. This is the specialty paper that has a little bit of a glossiness to it. I thought it looked a little different. I must have got them out of order. And that kind of answers the question that I had as to if the images would show up better. So they, they're a little bolder, more defined um, with the specialty stamping paper versus uh, this hammer mill that I have over here. And we're gonna do the hammer mill next. I thought I was doing it first, but now I've noticed um, that when you're buffing this specialty paper that you have to be careful because you can buff it a little bit too hard. So that is that paper. And you can kind of see the difference. I like the softness of this. And this 
is the hammer mill. So, just take the cloth and wipe it, buff it. Blend this a little bit more. And there you go. So that is what I originally used. And I think as it dries, it dries back a little bit. And this is okay, the specialty paper, if you wanted them to show up more and maybe in a different color family, it might be better. Um, I might play with it some more. I don't know if the shine is blocking it or not. And I'm going to pause this and see if I can locate uh, maybe a word die cut to put on there. And the other thing I thought about doing is taking one of these and I may do this and just taking my embossing pen and going around the edges of the leaves and put some gold embossing powder on there just to put like a little fine line of gold or I could take this and some of Tailored Expressions Happy Medium. This stuff is beautiful. I used it on a card. Matter of fact, I set it somewhere so I wouldn't put my arm in it because I'm terrible about that. But look at this. Um, the shine that you get. And it doesn't come off. It's... um. But it's called Happy Medium. And this is the only color I've used so far, but I have, I think, four different colors. I want to say I have gold, red, silver, and like a clear, sparkly one. So, but yeah. So I will pause this, see if I can find a die so we can turn this into a complete card, and I will be back. Okay, I did find the Autumn Leaves Spellbinders. That is what I used when I cut this out for another card. And right now, I can't remember which card it was, but it was one I created recently. Or I may have cut them out and then changed my mind and didn't use them. Because that happens. So, this is the set. And then, I have these right at home sets. And this one is Script Greetings. 
and then this coordinates with it and this is the script greetings that's it I need to put them on uh, a piece of magnetic sheeting so that uh, and transfer them to my other pockets because I use pockets like this and then I put all the stuff on a die I have different sizes. I have some slimline and then some that are more of kind of an A2 size, maybe a little bit bigger that fit these four by six sets. And that's how I have been switching over to store my stuff. So I'm going to put the background into my mini Misty. And I've already set up the stamp in there so I wouldn't have to do it later. And I'm going to use the Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool and dust this. And in case someone has one of these and they don't know how to shut it, you just slide this forward and that brings the bristles together and then you just slide it back. Love that thing. Up until I got that, I was pulling my hair out every time I would go to emboss. It may come out okay and it may not and it was too iffy and aggravating. So I used Ursa Mark and inked that up. And I'll just do it one more time just to be on the safe side. And then I broke my handy dandy coffee filter. I actually got a hole in it. I mean, aren't these things supposed to last for 10 years? So now I need a piece of cardstock or something. And I guess I'll use this scrap paper. And I'm going to. I almost thought about using this, but I don't think it'll show up because it's a clear. So I think we're just going to go with the Old Faithful Brutus Monroe Gilded. Love his gold embossing powder because it's great. All right, I'm going to pause this. Can you see that how clear that is using that powder tool. It's awesome. I'm going to pause this and heat emboss it and I'll be right back. While I was heat setting this, I was thinking that a chocolate brown would look really good on this also. So we're going to pour this back in here so I don't make a really big mess because I can do that real easily. Always have to cap everything because if it's sitting there open, I'm going to hit it. And we're going to have a mess. So I'll just wipe this off to get the anti-static powder off. And... Now, I'm going to apply the main sentiment, and I think I'm going to run this through my Xyron. This thing is old as I don't know what. Of course, I bumped the camera with it. This might not fit. Hmm. 
we might have to come up with a different idea because my big Xyron is out in my building. I had everything out in my studio and I've gradually moved into Lexi's room since she went to college because somehow I just don't like being out there away from everybody. So I think we're going to just use glue, smear it across the back real good. I'll take my finger try to get it on there so that it's even and doesn't show. And this is one of those sentiments that it's hard to tell which way it's supposed to sit. I'm not sure if I like them because they're forgiving or if I'd rather be disciplined by straight lines. <laughs> That didn't exactly work the way I wanted it to. I think it dried up before I got it stuck down because I put it on so lightly. Try this again. And let's see how that works. It wants to be a pain. Yeah, I probably should have gone and got the Xyron, but Oh well, hopefully it'll dry. You know, if I wasn't recording this, it would be just fine. <laughs> Well, hopefully that will dry. If not, lesson learned. <laughs> okay, I'm not a big tweezers person, but I'm going to try to use them so that I can place these words. I'm going to use this barely art glue. I've never been a big tape runner person. I don't know about y'all, but I need my wiggle room. My favorite glue actually is the blue Tombow, the aqua. Um, it gives me more wiggle room. And that's what I used for years when everybody else was using tape runners because you go to set it down with the tape runner and you can't move it. And I am not that active 
accurate. Sometimes even after I've glued it down, I'm still looking at it, trying to figure out if it looks crooked to me. So that is the think, and here is the U. I just put a few little dots. Of course, it would help if I stayed in frame. So I put a few dots on there, and it looks so easy when other people lay these down with a pair of tweezers. get a piece of burgundy to mount this on which I probably should have cut this before I'm gonna trim a little bit off so that I can have a border around it I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just using my guillotine trimmer from Tim Holtz, and this is the one that was the Tonic Studios. It's got the reddish burgundy color on it. I think this was the original one. I think everything has gone to mainly black handles, but it works just fine. I don't need to change colors just because there's a new one. I have too many repetitive tools as it is. I almost bought the Aqua Spellbinders Platinum 6 that they just came out with because it really is pretty. And I was thinking if I wanted to, I could dress the one I have up. I have the what the regular color, white with the gold trim. But I could put some flowers on there with the decals if I wanted. Um, and I may do that just to make it pretty for me. Let me grab a piece of burgundy cardstock. Okay, I found a piece of Cranberry Cocktail MFT cardstock. And the other thing I did, why I had it paused, is where that glue was showing. I didn't like it. So I grabbed my Crackling Campfire um, blender brush that still had some ink residue on it and I rubbed it all over the vellum area and it blended in where that glue is so now I'm gonna attach this to the cranberry cocktail cardstock Move my Zyron out the way and remove the stamp. And I bought a set of these uh, spacers. I hope you can see that. And what I usually do is I will set this is when I remember that I have them to use them <laughs> I will set my base 
and my Misty. Oh, well, let's not move it afterwards. All right. Get this lined up in here. And then set this. right here. Somehow mine's gotten bent. A little bit. I may have to press up against it when I do this. I guess these are so small that uh, sometimes they can flex. And then I'm going to put my glue on my card base, my card front, whatever part of the card this may be. I just put them together. I don't label the parts. <laughs> so, got glue on there. All right, why are you being difficult? Because you're on camera, that's why. And then just stick it down. And then we'll just attach this to a card base, which I have pre-cut over here. Let me glue this down real quick. bottom and that's it and we're all finished thanks for watching